Welcome to the NRL Punters Weekly Digest, your one-stop shop for everything you need to know leading into this week's NRL matches. I'm your host, Ben Hetherington. If you're new to this channel, if you're new to this podcast, vlog, whatever we want to call it, and you like what you see, you like what you hear, please give me a like. I appreciate it. And if you want to stay in the loop with all my future content, please give me a subscribe or follow, depending on the platform that you are consuming me from. And if you're back for more punishment, if you watch the first episode and you're back for more, I appreciate the patronage. Please also give me a like. And you haven't, if you haven't subscribed or followed yet, please do so now. We have a lot to get through in this week's episode because it's week one of the NRL season. And what a long, actually not, not as long as normal preseason, but it feels like it's been ages since we've last seen some competitive rugby league. And I don't know about you, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling really good. But I know that until we get halfway through the season, I'm going to be feeling like a front rower who's had a really hard off season and he just doesn't have his legs yet. But you know what? I'm really excited for what's ahead of us in this 2021 NRL season. A lot of great football ahead of us. Let's not waste any time. Let's get into the show. What we're going to cover in this week's episode is we're going to look back at uh, round three of the NRL trials, which I guess from a trials perspective were the trials that counted. We're going to uh, look at what's new in the NRL news for this week. We're going to look forward to the round one NRL team lists, and I'm going to give you my tips for each of those matches. And then to round out the show, we're going to look at some tasty punts to get you salivating ahead of the NRL season. Let's get into it. So rounding out our NRL trial matches, we had eight in that final week, so every team got to play. Uh, first up, we had the Canberra Raiders versus, versus the Sydney Roosters. Uh, Raiders lost that one 20 to 26. It was a pretty tight affair coming into halftime. Raiders were actually up 16-10. Then, as is, is normal in a trial match, uh, a lot of players, a lot of star players were hooked. Uh, in the end, it was a, it was a yeah, 20-26 result um, going into favor of the Sydney Roosters. Tough showing by both clubs. Good, serious first hit out. Melbourne Storm absolutely flogged the Newcastle Knights 30-10. Both sides were near full strength. Kalen Ponga obviously out with injury. Um, and the Storm were just too clinical and crisp for the, for the Knights. Uh, they're going to be extremely hard to beat again this year. There were good touches from their spine all round. Uh, Jerome Hughes, uh, Ryan Pappenhausen, uh, Nico Hines off the bench, and uh, Harry Grant, who subsequently was injured in that match. I'm not sure how long he's out for. I think about a month-ish, but they all looked very strong. Gold Coast Titans versus the New Zealand Warriors. That was a 12-all affair. One of the best highlights from that match was seeing big Tino Fa'asua Malawiawi. Fa'asua Malawiawi. Sorry. God, I love that guy. Seeing him in open field, uh, he scored a try from 40 metres out. There was no way anyone was going to stop him. It was 12-6 to the Titans at half time, and they could have run away with it. They squandered a couple of tries. But in the end, it ended up as a draw. Cronulla Sharks versus Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. 12-16 to 16, uh, in favor of the Bulldogs. They won that one. Uh, there was some really pleasing uh, sweeping uh, fullback backline plays there. William Kennedy to Ronald uh, Mulitano looked really effective. And that resulted in two tries between those two. Uh, young Brad Dietz for the Dogs uh, made some really enterprising breaks from Dummy Half when he was on the field. Corey Allen, I think, has all but snared that fullback jersey for the Dogs if there was any if there was any conjecture as to who was going to play there. St. George Illawarra Dragons versus South Sydney. South put on a clinic, 48-16. Both sides were full strength, but the Bunnies were just too good. Latrell Mitchell, a lot of the pundits out there are saying, oh, he's, he's going to elevate to that best player in the league status this year if he can stay injury-free. He made a very good account for himself. And his first hit out, uh, first major hit out, I'm not sure if he played in the in the previous trial, but either way, he was very dominant from the back. He set up two tries, scored one of his own. Uh, Cody Walker scored a hat try, <laughs> hat try, <laughs> hat trick 
and he absolutely set Mudgee alight. It was it was really good to watch. Souths just looked really, really tough to beat, albeit it was against the Dragons. Penrith Panthers versus Parramatta Eels. Uh, Penrith won that one, probably not too surprising there. 16 to 6. It was it was a reasonably close encounter, I guess you could say. Uh, this Panthers spine were were sublime. They were causing all sorts of headaches for Parramatta. Worrying signs for Parramatta, perhaps. I don't know. You be the judge. Tell me in the comments. They didn't score a try till the 61st minute, and it was off a mistake. It was off a Penrith mistake. Had there not been that mistake, then they wouldn't have scored, seemingly. Brisbane Broncos versus North Queensland Cowboys. This was really, really tight at half time, but in the end, North Queensland ran away with it, 34 to 18. Brisbane looked good. They they had um, they were very speedy and and crafty uh, in the playmaking uh, ranks. They were causing a few troubles for the Cowboys there, but in the end, and I think this might be partially to because of the fact that the the Broncos rested a lot of their star players in that second half that that the Cowboys got away with it probably not too much to take out of that game to be honest West Tigers versus Manly Seagulls well West Tigers um they uh they did they did some damage <laughs> they did some real damage 52 to 18 uh Manly didn't have their first choice halves uh DCE didn't play there was no Kieran Foran um who impressed me was Dane Larry at fullback for the West Tigers. I'm guessing, uh, sorry, Dane Laurie for the West Tigers. I'm guessing he's getting first crack at the fullback jumper this year. He scored two tries and set up a try. Um, Adam Dewey scored a try and set up like three, I think. He looked really good. Um, and that's it in terms of preseason trials. In this week's uh, Rugby League news, news around the grounds, I guess you could say, big signing news. Bradman Best has extended his stay in Newcastle till 2014, which is, uh, sorry, 2024. I'm a decade behind. 2024, which I think is a great coup for the Newcastle Knights. The guy's an absolute world beater. He's got a great career ahead of him. I think he's still only 19, which is really scary when you think about it. Jerome Hughes. Now, he was being courted by the New Zealand Warriors, but he told them to get stuffed. Not literally, but I guess figuratively. And he decided to stay at Melbourne till 2024, which is a really good sign for that club. Um, I think their spine is wrapped up for the next few years. You'd think that they've only got success ahead of them, that club. The NRL has, I, I wouldn't say announced, but uh, Abdo has come out and said that he's open to the idea, which I think was probably not originally floated by, but Kalen, Kalen Pong and Ponga recently floated the idea of having the um, players' names, players' surnames at the back of jerseys, which could have some huge marketing um, and commercial um, implications for the game and, and could create a lot of opportunities in those areas. So that seems to be a, a buzz now. And given how progressive the NRL has become in the last few years in terms of, you know, changing of rules and changing of, um, you know, their, their views on certain things, how they've really focused in on the social aspect of the game also and uh, their relationship with outside stakeholders. It's foreseeable that they might go down that track and, and we might see players names at the back of jerseys, kind of in the same way that they do with Super League where you're assigned a number. So it might not necessarily be the position that you play, but you're assigned a number, you stick with it. Otherwise, they just have to keep reprinting those jerseys, wouldn't they? It'd be very expensive. Let me know in the comments what your, what your thoughts are on this. Would you like to see players' surnames at the back of jerseys? Do you like to stick with tradition? Let me know. The New Zealand Warriors will have to be based on the New South Wales Central Coast, which is pretty much their Australian home, until at least June 21st, and that's as a result of COVID travel restrictions. So the the unfortunate New Zealand Warriors, I don't want to call them the unfortunate, I don't want to kind of heap any kind of pity on them, 
But uh, they're up against it again this year. They're, they're going to lose a lot of home games as a result of that. And look, we, uh, the wider rugby league community, I know, shares my sentiment that we're really, really appreciative of the, the sacrifices of the New, Ze- New Zealand Warriors. Not only the players, the staff, the administration, but, but their f- family and friends have had to make as a, um, as a result of being able to, to carry on the NRL competition. So we really appreciate it. And we love you guys. Cooper Cronk confronted Buzz Rothfield on Fox Footy's NRL 360 show. Some of you out there may have seen it. It was it was heated. It wasn't heated in a way that was aggressive, but it was there was a lot. There's a lot of underlying feeling there from Cooper Cronk. That's Cronk that really came to service in the article, uh, in the in the show. Sorry, the the interview. Not even really an interview, but it was kind of like a round table discussion that they have on NRL 360. If you haven't read the Buzz Rothfield article in the Daily Telegraph, long and short of it is uh, there's a bit of controversy around Cooper Cronk's relationship with both the Melbourne Storm and the Sydney Roosters. So we all know that he's got a coaching role with the Sydney Roosters. Um, what some people may not have known, and myself included, because I'm not too interested in Cooper Cronk's personal life, what he decides to do in his professional life or his personal life is up to him as long as everything's above board and there's nothing untoward going on. Now, obviously, when it comes to the rugby league perspective, there's a bit of interest there, but long and short of it is, is he's a coach at the Roosters, but he also has a consultancy role with the Melbourne Storm and supposedly he acts mainly in a corporate capacity as a sort of, I guess, kind of club ambassador or something like that. Anyway, there were photos of Cooper Cronk at Storm Training and it looked like he was coaching players. And basically Phil Rothfield has come out and basically called him out and questions, questioned his integrity. Things got very heated. Um, in the end, I don't think they were any closer to resolving their issues, but Cooper Cronk basically came out and said, "Hey, the uh, the respective coaches of the the Roosters and the Storm, Trent Robertson and Craig Bellamy, as long as the, as well as the the respective CEOs, um, Frank Panisi and uh, oh Uncle George, was it Uncle George? Oh gosh, Rooster CEO. Anyway, um, they're both they're both happy with." the professional capacity that Cooper Cronk is working for with both clubs. They understand that both roles are very different. And Cooper Cronk came out and said, look, I am a coach at the Roosters. I have some say in what, um, in how the game is played at the Roosters. I have some bearing on the results as a result of that. Whereas at the Melbourne Storm, I don't. I've done a bit of um, FaceTiming and limited one-on-one training uh, or coaching consultancy with Jerome Hughes and Cameron Munster. They're two different things. There's nothing on toward going on here. Laid it out on the table, was very transparent about it. I don't know. For mine, it still seems a little bit dodgy. I don't want to question the integrity of Cooper Cronk because he's a champion of our game and he certainly brought a lot of joy to me watching as a rugby league fan. And if both clubs are fine with it, then it's all good. But this is another one I'd like to get your thoughts on. How do you feel? about Cooper Cronk's relationship with both clubs. He says when it comes to game day, he's a he's a Sydney Rooster, not a Melbourne Storm, and I get that, that's fine. But what do you think? Is it a conflict of interest? Let me know in the comments. Okay, round one, NRL team, lip, team lists and tips. Thursday, March 11th, this Thursday, we have the Melbourne Storm versus the South Sydney Roosters at Amy Park. That's an 8.05 p.m. kickoff. The Storm, 1-17. to uh, Ryan Pappenhausen at fullback. George Jennings and Josh Adokar on the wings. In the centres, we've got George Jennings and Remus Smith. Halves are Cameron Smith and Jerome Hughes. Front rowers, uh, Jesse Bromwich, uh, Brandon Smith and Christian Welch. And in the back row, we have Felice Kafusi, Kenny Bromwich, and Nelson Asofa Solomona. Coming off the bench, we have Chris Lewis, uh, Tui Kamakamitha, Tom Eisenhuth, and Nico Hines. For the Rabbitohs, 
At fullback, we have Latrell Mitchell. On the wings, we have Alex Johnston and Josh Mansour. In the centers, we have Dane, Ganga, Dane Gagai and Campbell Graham. In the halves, as always, we have the champions, Cody Walker and Adam Reynolds. And then in the front row, Thomas Burgess, Damian Cook, Tavita Totola. Back row of Jacob Host, Jaden Sewer, Cameron Murray. And then coming off the bench, making his debut for the South Sydney Rabbitohs, at least in an NRL season match, Benji Marshall. And we have Mark Nichols, Keon Kolomatangi, and Jai Arrow also making his debut for the South Sydney Rabbitohs. His is going to be a hotly contested match, and I can't wait for this. I think this is the best possible season opener we could have had. That or throwing maybe a Roosters or a Panthers into the mix or a Raiders. My tip is Storm by four. On Friday, first match of the Fridays, um, we have from McDonald Jones Stadium in Newcastle, the Newcastle Knights versus the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. The Knights 1 to 17 are at fullback Tex Hoy on the wings Stafford Toa and uh, Gehamat Shib Shibasaki. And in the centers, we've got Anali Tuala and Bradman Best. Halves of Kurt Mann and Mitchell Pierce. In the front row, we've got David Clemmer, Jaden Braley, Daniel Saifiti. In the back row, we've got Tyson Frizzell making his club debut. Mitchell Barnett and Connor Watson at lock. Coming off the bench, we have Sawaso Sue, Jacob Safiti, Josh King, and Brody Jones. For the Bulldogs, making his Bulldogs debut, Corey Allen at fullback, Nick Meany and Dali Wateni Zalesniak are your wingers. Nick Meany, uh, sorry, Will Hopawade and Nick Kotrick are in the centers. Nick Kotrick's also making his debut for the Bulldogs. In the halves, we've got Jake Avarillo, Kyle Flanagan. In the front row, in the front row, Offa Hickey Ogden, Sione Katoa, Jack Hetherington making his club debut. Really like that guy. Um, or was he with the Bulldogs last year? Was he there at the back end? Disregard. Having a mind fart. Uh, in the back row, Adam Elliott, Corey Waddell, and Josh Jackson. Off the bench, we've got Bradley Dietz, who was very good in the trial. Renoff Atoni, Raymond Fartola Mariner, and then Dylan Napa. My tip for that game is the Knights by eight, just by virtue of the fact that they're just slightly stronger and they're at home. I think that the Bulldogs will make a very good account for themselves. The other Friday night game is the Brisbane Broncos versus Brisbane Broncos. Brisbane Broncos versus the Parramatta Eels at Suncorp Stadium. Brisbane 1 to, 1 to 17 are Jermaine Asako, Xavier Coates, Herbie Farnworth, Tessie New, David Mead coming back to the club. Anthony Milford and Brody Croft are in the halves. That's not true. I don't know if Anthony Milford's fit. I'll put an asterisk next to that one. Uh, Tavita Pangai Jr., Jake Turpin, Matthew Lodge are in the front row. Alex Glenn, new co club captain. Uh, Jordan Rickey and Pat Carrigan are in the back row. And then coming off the bench, we have uh, John Asiata, who's just come over from the Cowboys. Thomas Flegler, Ethan Bullimore, and Ben Teo. For the Eels, we have King Gutho at fullback. Mike Acevo and Blake Ferguson on the wings. Tom Opacic making his club debut for Parramatta and Wonga Blake in the centers. Dylan Brown and Mitchell Moses are in the halves. Regan Campbell-Gillard, Reed Marnie and Junior Polo. What a forward pack that is. What a front row, sorry. Uh, Sean Lane, Ryan Madison and Nathan Brown round out that forward pack. Coming off the bench, we have Oregon Kafusi, Isaiah Papali, Keegan Hipgrave and Will Smith getting jiggy with it. My tip is the Eels by four, although I would not be surprised if Brisbane got an upset there. And if you like Brisbane, there's some really juicy odds for them, which I don't cover in my tips this week because I would not go that way myself. On Saturday, from Central Coast Stadium, the new home of the New Zealand Warriors, we have the Warriors versus the Gold Coast Titans. The Warriors are Roger Tuovasa Shek at fullback. On the wings, we have David Fosatua and Ken Mamalo. In the centers, we have Ewan Aitken and Peter Hiku. That is a very good starting five at the back. In the halves, we have Cody Nicarima, Cody Nicarima and Chanel Harris-Tavita. 
in the in the forward pack in the front row, we have Aiden Fanua, Blake Wade, Egan, and Jermaine Tanoa Brown. In the back row, we have Elisa Katoa, Bailey Sirinan, and Tohu Harris. Off the bench, Jazz Tavanga, Ben Murdoch, Masilla, Lisa Naumau, and Bunty Afoa. For the Titans, we have AJ Brimson at fullback. On the wings, Corey Thompson and Anthony Don is good. In the centers, we have Brian Kelly and Patrick Herbert. In the halves, we have Ash Taylor and Jamal Fogarty. New Titans captain, Jamal Fogarty. Jared Wallace, Mitch Rain, and Moeki Fotueka are your front row back. In the back row, we have Kevin Proctor, David Fafita, making his club debut for the Titans. And also, Big Tino. He's at lock. They're going to be a problem, that forward pack. They're going to be a real, real problem. Coming off the bench, we have Tyrone Peachy, Sam Lassoni, Jamin Jolliffe, and Aaron Clark. My tip? Titans by 10. Titans by 10. On to our 5.30 game. That was a 3 p.m. game. 5.30 game from the Sydney Cricket Ground, the traditional home of Rugby League in Australia. We have the Sydney Roosters versus the Manly Seagulls. For the Roosters, we have James Tedesco, Daniel Tupo, Josh Morris, Joseph Manu, and Brett Morris at the back with Lachlan Lamb winning the battle to the 5-8 spot for the Roosters. He's partnering Luke Keary in the halves. Lindsay Collins, Jake Friend, and Sio Sia uh, Takeaho are your front rowers. Angus Crichton, Satili Tupunua, and Isaac Liu are your back rowers. Adam Kieran, Jared Waria Hargraves, Nat Butcher, and Daniel Saluka Fafida are your bench players. For the Sea Eagles, we have Dylan Walker at fullback as a result of the Tommy Turbo injury, obviously. We have Jason Saab, who's making his club debut, and Ruben Garrick on the wings. Brad Parker and Moses Suli are your centers. Kieran Foran, the prodigal son, returns to Manly to partner his old mate DCE in the halves. Josh Alloway, Lachlan Croker, and Martin Tapau are your front rowers. Uh, Jack Kozievsky, Curtis Sirinan, and Jake Trebojevic are your back rowers. Tavita Funa, Andrew Davey, Morgan Boyle, and Taniela Paseka are coming off the bench. My tip for this one, although it could be much closer, and I really like that manly side even without Tommy Turbo in there, Roosters by 14. Because, because just, they're, they're Roosters. On to the next game. We have the Penrith Panthers versus the North Queensland Cowboys. And this is the 7.35 game from Panther Stadium. For the Panthers, we have Dylan Edwards at fullback. We've got Charlie Staines and Brian Toho in, on the wings. Paul Momorowski and Stephen Crichton are your centers. In the halves, we have the grand final halves. Jerome, Loa, Jerome Luai and Nathan Cleary. Moses Leoda, Api Corusau, and James Fisher Harris are your front rowers, with Viliami Kikau, Kurt Capewell, and Isaiah Yo rounding out your forward pack. Tyrone May, Spencer Lanier, and uh, Matthew Eisenhuth, and Liam Martin are all coming off the bench. That side is stacked, isn't it? It's almost unfair if you follow any other team. Mostly. Cowboys. Scott Drinkwater at fullback, who was very good in their trial. Cole Felt and Hamaso, the Hammer, Tabio Fido. He's actually in the center, sorry. <laughs> Cole Felt and Valentine Holmes on the wings. Cole, uh, Isan Masters and Hamaso, uh, Tabuai Fido in the centers. Michael Morgan makes his return to the Cowboys from that long stint on the injury sidelines to partner Jake Clifford in the halves. Francis Molo, Reese Robson, and Jordan McLean are your front rowers, with Mitchell Dunn, Cohen Hess, Jason Tamalolo in the back row. Coming off the bench, we have Jake Granville, Josh McGuire, Corey Jensen, and Lachlan. Excuse me, Lachlan Burr. My tip is the Panthers by a mile. Panthers by 20, maybe more. 
They're just too good. They're just too good. On to the Sunday games. We have from GIO Stadium, a.k.a. Bruce Stadium, a.k.a. Canberra Stadium. The Canberra Raiders versus the West Tigers, and that's a 4.05 p.m. kickoff. For the Raiders, we have Charles Nickel Clockstad at fullback. On the wings, we have Bailey Simonson and Jordan Rapana. In the centers, we have Sebastian Chris, who will partner Kurt and Scott, Curtis Scott in the centers in the absence of Jared Croker. Jack White and George Williams are your halves. Josh Big Papa, Papa Lee. And Dunamis Louis are your starting props with Josh Hodgson making his long-awaited return from injury to captain the side. Hudson Young, Elliot Whitehead, and Joseph Tarpany are your back rowers. With Saliva, Havili, Ryan Sutton, Sia Soliola, and Ryan James coming off the bench. For the Tiggers, we got Dane Laurie, who was very good in the third trial at fullback. David Nofaluma, AJ Kep... Oh, actually, yeah, AJ Kapoa on the wings, and James Roberts and Joey Leilua in the centers. Moses Zembai is playing 5-8 for round one with Luke Brooks in the halves. I don't know what that's going to look like halfway through the season, but I guess we shall see. Uh, James Tamau, who's making his club debut. Jacob Little and Joe Afangawi, also making his club debut, are your front rowers with Luke Garner, Luciano Leilua, Alex Twole rounding up that forward pack. Tommy Talau, Thomas McKayley, Stefano Otuakamanu and Russell Packer are your bench players. My tip is the Raiders by 18. On to the last game of round one of the 2021 NRL season, which sees us see, <laughs> which sees us see the St. George Illawarra Dragons take on the Cronulla Sharks from Nestrata Jubilee Stadium. We've had a rename of the Dragons ground from 6.15 p.m. Interesting. The Dragons, 1-17, to are Matthew Dufty, Cody Ramsey, Jack Bird, Zach Lomax, Michaeli Ravalawa. They're your back five. Adam Clune, Ben Hunt are your halves, at least for round one. Again, may not look like that halfway through the season. Blake Laurie, Andrew McCullough, who's making his debut for the Dragons, and Paul Vaughan are the front rowers. Josh Kerr, Tarek Sims, and Tyrell Fuemiano are your back rowers. With Poasa Faamausili, I do apologize if I haven't pronounced that properly. Uh, Trent Merrin, Daniel Alvaro, making his club debut, I believe. And Braden Williami. Also making his club debut, I believe. I think he also came from Parramatta. Prove me wrong. For the Sharks, we have Will Kennedy, Sione Katoa, Josh Dugan, Jesse Ramian, Ronald Mulitalo, Matt Moylan, Chad Townsend. They're your back seven. We have Braden Hamlin Ueli, Blake Braley, and Aaron Woods in the front row. Britton Nakora, Wade Graham, Toby Rudolph. Sorry, Wade Graham. They round out your back row. Uh, Tony Rudolph, Connor Tracy, Aiden Tolman, and Jack Williams are your bench players. I have Sharks winning this one by eight, but this could really be a coin toss. All right, to finish off the show, let's talk about some tasty punts. Now, I'm not a betting man, you know this, but if I had a betting plan, I'd do like my old mate Stan. He's my favorite neighborino. I'd use the orange app. Make of that what you will. Make of it what you will. If you're smart, you know what I'm on about. All right. So to start the year, I've got an array of anytime try score bets for you to consider. I've got Alex Johnson at $1.95, Josh Adokar $1.95, Ken Mamalo $2, Charlie Staines $1.95, Stephen Crichton $2.15, Bailey Simonson $1.90. And then I've got a massive multi for you. Sydney Roosters head to head at $1.30. Into Penrith Panthers minus nine and a half at two dollars. Into Charlie Staines anytime try score at one dollar ninety five. Into Canberra Raiders minus nine and a half at two dollars. That'll get you ten dollars fourteen. All my tips into a massive multi twenty three dollars and eleven cents. That's been our show. Thank you so much for watching and listening. I'll see you next week.